This is a short segment just to show you. I've done the reinforcement on the uh, right side cover with a couple of layers of uh, uh, fiberglass mat. I've also done the coating and the fiberglassing on the uh, left side cover. And let's zoom in just a little bit. And you can see it just looks like a big mess. But that's okay. With a Varbro cutter, it cleans up real easy. And those guys, you probably noticed that uh, all my clay melted out. Because I did uh, heat soak them to about 200 degrees with a heat gun. All my clay melted out. What's going to happen? Ah, not a big deal. Uh, one thing I didn't tell you was I clayed up. And then caref very carefully I used uh, thick uh, super glue. Put a nice little coating on it and then uh, use some zip it to uh, harden it immediately so it's got a little it's got a hard coating on the outside that's uh, just going to be fine and then the uh, uh, if I do use heat then uh, the clay just melts out so that's what uh, those things look like they look like a mess but uh, next time out I'll have a mold okay that's it for this section okay next section uh, been busy. Um, I got uh, the uh, reinforcement done where I had the Bondo. So that's all done. I just have to clean up the primer on the inside and that's ready to uh, spray the separator on and make a mold or make a part actually. And this part pop, pops right off. No. <laughs> no. That was a little harder than that. I know you guys that uh, uh, do fiberglass we're thinking boy oh boy he'll never get that off without destroying it bending it up or denning it kind of thing because he because of these sharp curves things like that wants to hold it in so I was just real careful uh, you can see the green that's the uh, part all but uh, there's a uh, I don't know if you can tell but absolutely no damage whatsoever um, as you can see I see not all of the uh, uh, clay oozed out when I heated up but you can see it's you might be able to see it's kind of shiny I just took a little just painted on uh, super glue so that way uh, uh, that can pour out and I can heat it and it's not a problem at all and uh, then just some lacquer thinner or acetone is just gonna that, that eats the clay so they'll bring that out and I'll just scrape this off like I said I could uh, gotta send this back in good condition it was in ready when I got it so but that's what I promised so that's that and here's a mold came out really really nice like I said I used two layers to make it semi flexible uh, this isn't a production mold they would usually much thicker um, so came out pretty good I do have to do a little cleanup around here where the uh, the uh, coating came in underneath the, where the spot welds were there but uh, everything else looks great um, and uh, so I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I didn't cut back enough on the fiberglass to relieve it enough, so I got a couple little holes there, and one there, and so, and that's between the coating and the fiberglass, and it's like that's not a big deal. All I'm going to do is uh, fill that with super glue, hit it with a kicker, and that's going to harden up, and that's not going to be a problem at all. So that's how you make a mold, and uh, so this just has a little bit of cleanup to do and I can spray that so pretty soon I'll have a uh, two fiberglass side covers so that's that section just another short update guys uh, making some more progress I am uh, not too good with this uh, taping stuff or videotaping so or video digital or whatever so I'm learning um, trying to get everything uh, uh, a little farther away in focus um, and maybe try to get it in the frame if I possibly can <laughs> uh, so uh, basically here's the progress um, the uh, right side cover is almost ready um, I still have a little bit of sanding to do uh, let's take a look at it I was going to coat it to make the part but decided uh, that it needed a little bit more cleanup so I just I've got that out here um, Next, um, we've got, uh, just laid this a little while ago. Uh, again, it looks pretty nasty. 
but uh, that's how the parts look, at least how I do it. Um, so uh, that's almost ready to pull out. So that'll be interesting. I've never done anything with a little bung thing like this before, so we'll see how that works. But as far as making the parts go, um, I've tried cloth a million times. I just can't use it, and so uh, I really need to learn how to. But uh, for this kind of stuff, um, the uh, mat works fine. I'm not going with carbon fiber. That's crazy expensive. Um, so this is a little bit heavier, but uh, uh, not near as much as you'd think because because of the uh, weave in there. I only use uh, just a single layer of uh, uh, for the main body of mat and then around the edges for a little bit of strength I double layer it so uh, it's, it makes a relatively light piece and uh, it's strong uh, I use three layers here because that's where it bolts on and it's got some overhang here so that's got another two layers on top of that so that'll be more than strong enough so but uh, we have that and uh, just a couple of things you learn in the process um, if uh, you've got your heat gun, this is a Raytec, a mini mini temp. Um, uh, if you uh, have it out in with your chemicals and stuff like that, make sure you put it on top of something because if acetone um, falls over and it lays in it, uh, it just kind of melts the whole thing. <laughs> so, so lesson learned. It still works. Just looks like hell, but um, but be careful. Acetone just melt the hell out of plastic. And the other thing is when you get in a rush, not a big rush, but I was looking for something to uh, um, put the part on and lay it down so the fiberglass wouldn't fold out the laying against it. So I wanted to raise it up a bit and I was looking all over the place, couldn't find the right thing until I found, uh, I looked and I said, wow, the Rust-Oleum aircraft remover works perfectly. So I hold it up. So uh, the thing is, um, <laughs> when you heat it up, this thing... Uh, expanded, degassed, and then uh, when it cooled down it just went poop like that. So learn something new every day as far as that goes so uh, I won't be doing that again. It'll take a little bit more time but uh, and that's about it. Uh, uh, hopefully this is a little bit better video. Oh one more thing I, um, I was talking about the uh, nubbies and that just didn't get in the frame at all. Uh, like I said I just made uh, uh, a two-part mold because there is an undercut um, just out of Bondo and so it just fits together and I can put in uh, my JB weld and so uh, this is like I said my first my first part um, it's just a test part so I can see where everything needs to go but uh, um, I've reshaped it a little closer to what I want but uh, it's kind of cool. Like I said, it, the Bondo is great for making little, uh, you know, quickie molds, and then you can just uh, use a JB weld. I use a four minute, and uh, well, you got a part. I mean, that is rock hard. It's, it's reinforced with steel, so um, hopefully that's in the frame now. I move the camera back a little bit, so it might not be going out of focus as much as it did with the camera real close. So that's uh, where I am at now. Uh, this is still a little bit warm. I'm gonna let that cool down, and then I'm gonna. Uh, pop the part out and then I'll be ready for trimming and I'm going to have a new side cover. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. That's that section there. Well, I'll let the mold cool down and a uh, few taps with the old uh, dead blow and we got part. As you can see, this is the uh, part all plastic ease. And it's so cool. No wax. And it's tough stuff. I was a little worried about the bottom piece. Because it's such an entrapped part there, but uh, it came out nice. So, most excellent. Most excellent. So, we have a piece. Time to trim it up and finish, and I can put on the uh, the nubbies. So, just a quick update on that. We got a part.